All right, so I've been around Rock for a few days and today is the ladies event. So far we've bricked everything, but that's poker tournaments a lot of the time. So today, $500 ladies event, Bill Perkins added $50,000 to the prize pool and the structure is pretty good. So I'm super excited. Let's get in there and play some cards. It is 10 a.m. and we are here to play the Lodge Ladies 50K Guarantee $500 buy-in 30 minute level and 30,000 starting stack tournament. Things started out great. We were coasting early on. I built a stack of about 70,000 and there was over 249 entries. After just an hour of play, the turnout was absolutely insane. Shout out to the Lodge for not only listening to us and giving us an amazing structure, but putting on an amazing event. By level 1,500, 1,500, we were up to 326 entries and I had amassed a stack of 115,000. As you can see, we kept riding this wave and our stack kept growing and growing and we found ourselves at level 15, 3,000, 3,000 with a stack of 203,000. During the middle stages of the tournament, stacks got a little bit shorter and I found myself in a flip situation where I had pocket eights versus king queen. I flopped a set, but she ran out of straight, so that brought us back down to 104,000. I then doubled up with ace king versus pocket nines, but then Christy Moreno raised under the gun with about 11 big blinds. I shipped with pocket tens, she had jacks, and unfortunately, I went back down. But nearing the money bubble, we are in a three-way all-in. I have pocket nines versus sevens versus ace queen, and we get the hold, and so now we are entering hand for hand. We make it into the money and win a nice pot on the bubble. Shortly after the bubble burst, there was a raise from the cutoff from the biggest chip stack in the tournament. Dusty was the chip leader and a fierce, aggressive opponent. The player next to act wanted to exploit Dusty by ripping all in with about 25 big blinds. I'm next to act on the button and look down at ace king offsuit. I reshove, of course. Dusty ends up folding and I'm up against ace 10 offsuit and get a massive double up. So now I have 463 thousand chips. Now we're dwindling down and there's 18 people left. I bought into this tournament for $500 and now I'm guaranteed $2,144. Now we found ourselves down to 15 players left. There are only two tables left out of the over 330 entries into this tournament. I'm now guaranteed $2,518. I was cruising along when there was a raise in early position and I looked down at pocket kings. I had just under 15 big blinds, so I shove. The player who raised snap called me and I am in the poker tournament player's nightmare of kings versus aces all in for a million chip pot with only 15 players left. Sadly, I lost a hand, I couldn't find a king, and I was crippled down to my last 1.5 big blinds. The very next hand, I get dealt ace five of diamonds with my 1.5 big blinds, and I'm all in against the lady who just crippled me with the pocket aces. She has king jack, and we somehow find the hold, so now we have doubled up. The very next hand, I'm dealt pocket sevens and I go all in yet again with my five big blinds. I get called in two spots and I somehow hold against two other hands. So now after doubling my 1.5 big blinds and then my five big blinds, we are right back to where I started before the Kings versus Aces cooler. A pretty sick spin, probably my sickest and most important spin I've ever had in my career thus far. I battled my butt off and we were down to 10 players. Players. And now I'm guaranteed $3,088. With 10 of us left, another player got eliminated and now we are on the unofficial final table. The live stream room was only eight handed, so we had to wait till one more player got knocked out, but that happened and now it's time to head to the live stream room and we are going to be playing for $43,000. All right guys, so we have a quick break here before we set up for the live stream and I just, I can't believe how the day's gone today. I mean, just fought my butt off, tried to find spots, tried to be patient and, you know, of course gotten a little lucky in some spots and then very unlucky in others. So that's what poker is. And uh, so yeah, there's eight left. We're gonna be a uh, final table of the live stream. <laughs> Shout out to this guy. <laughs> and, um, we, I'll post a link shortly. So uh, anyway, thanks for all the good luck sweat guys. Let's try to go for that 43K. Now with eight of us left, it's time to head into the beautiful live stream room at the lodge. There are very few scenarios in my poker career where I'm actually able to film or vlog a final table. And thankfully this time, you guys will be able to see all the hands I play and the ones I don't. 
With over $43,000 up top, there is going to be a lot of ICM strategy involved. With the pay jumps being so top heavy, every single chip matters. And as you can see, even though we're coming in seventh out of eight players remaining, one of the things I'm best at is navigating through these spots. So I know with my edge and skill, I can maneuver through and hopefully find some spots to pick up some chips. So let's get into this final table and go over the hands that I played to get to the very end. And one of the very first hands I get involved with, there's a raise under the gun from one of the chip leaders, Krisha, and she raises to 3x, which is a little bit large, and she makes it 150,000. It folds all the way around to me in the big blind, and after paying the big blind and the ante, I'm left with 13.4 big blinds. As I said, every single chip matters, but unfortunately with King Jack offsuit here facing an under the gun open in the big blind, I do need to defend this one. Because SPR is going to be so shallow, meaning I'm not gonna have that many chips left behind once I call and enter this pot we're gonna be able to get it in on all king high and jack high boards and if we flop a hand like an open ender so let's call and see if we can find ourselves a favorable flop the flop comes ace queen jack rainbow so we do flop a pair and a gutter but this is a pretty bad spot for us we're not gonna do anything but check in this spot, so I check it over to Krisha and she puts in a very nice size bet of $125. Then Jamie says it best. Less than 12 big blinds in our stack, every single chip is so precious. So because every single chip matters, I have bottom pair, a gutter, but my hand can be likely dominated even by any ASEX combination. I can't afford to put any more of my chips in this pot, so I do have to lay this one down unfortunately, but we didn't lose a ton on the hand and so we're gonna move on to the next one. In this hand, there's a raise from the chip leader, Chris Reed, in the cutoff, and she makes it 150,000, so she goes for a large size of 3x. It then folds around to me in the small blind, and I look down at pocket queens with just under 13 big blinds. The absolute dream. Facing a cutoff open, Chris should be pretty wide here, although she doesn't get out of line too often, she is the chip leader, so I know her range can be a little bit loose here, but of course I didn't expect her to wake up with this strong of a hand. Even though there's a shorter stack who has just about 5 big blinds or less, this hand is just way too strong to fold. The pay jumps aren't that crazy at this point, and pocket queens with just under 13 big blinds is just too good to do anything other than go all in, and here's what happened make the shove. Chris Reed's looking for an ace. Four or five now. Four or five. A little sweat. <laughs> So we get the double up and now we have just under 25 big blinds and now since we have some chips and some wiggle room, we have a real shot to either win this tournament or settle up for an ICM chop. Shortly after I doubled up through the chip leader, we found ourselves down to seven as Chris Reed knocks out Sarah, so now we are all guaranteed $6,196. In this hand, it folds to us and we're in the cutoff with 25 big blinds and 6-5 of hearts. I look around at who's on the button with the small blind and the big blind and most players at this table are under defending and probably playing a little bit snug, especially because the pay jumps are about to get really juicy. Because of this, 6-5 of hearts is going to be an open in this spot. Krisha is second in chips and while I am a middling stack, she could totally take advantage of this and start 3-betting me really light from the button and isolating, especially because she might know as a middling stack, I really have to be patient and wait for good spots because there are some shorter stacks than me. So because of the ICM pressure, I can't take marginal spots. So I'd have to really wake up with a huge hand to put all my chips in because we have to wait out these short stacks busting. However, she's going to be a little bit handcuffed because she knows she has two shorter stacks in the small and big blind that can wake up with hands and jam over her. And I don't think Krisha is getting too out of line and she's playing pretty straightforward. Joy is in the big blind and I've been playing with her a decent amount of the day. I feel like she was under defending and playing a little bit snug, so this was a great spot to either isolate and try and get heads up and take it down post or take it down pre-flop. So I raise the 6-5 of hearts to 110,000 and sure enough, the button folds, the small blind, and Joy lets her hand go so our plan comes together and we pick up some precious big blinds. 
this hand, I'm under the gun and look down at Deja Vu Pocket Queens yet again. Because I've seen some of my opponents raise 3x at this final table, I thought I'd take a second and explain a little bit why raise sizes are really important. While there are some circumstances and situations where raising more than 2x or 2.1 or 2.2 is perfectly fine, in general, tournaments are very different from cash games, where in cash games you can liberally raise 3x, and in some lower stakes games, people are raising 4, 5, 6x, but in tournaments, when you're usually sub 50, 40, 30, 20 big blinds, you want to keep SPR manageable so you can navigate post flop as best as you can. Another reason why raising 2x or 2.1 in tournaments is so valuable is let's say I'm in late position and I'm opening a marginal hand and I raise to three big blinds. Then I get jammed on by a short stack in the blinds and I have to fold. Instead of losing two big blinds, I just lost an extra big blind. And like I've said many times throughout this vlog, every single big blind matters. So in this case, I'm gonna raise a little over 2x. It's still a raise. We still have position and aggression. We don't need to raise large and we wanna keep our raise sizes the same so we don't give the strength of our hand away based on our raise sizes. So in this case, I raised to 110,000. It folds around to the small blind and she has just under five big blinds and king jack of diamonds. In theory, she should just be getting it all in here with her suited Broadway hand, but she elects to make the call and then Chris is in the big blind and has king five of hearts. She comes along as well. So we are going to go three ways to a flop. The flop is 10, 6, 3, rainbow. So a very, very nice flop to see as there's no ace and no king. They check it over to me, and in general, on 10 high boards like this, our opponents are going to flop a lot of hands like straight draws, gutters, 6x combinations, 10x combinations. So because of how dynamic this board is with the 10 on board, we can go a little bit bigger. Generally, in multi-way pots, you do want to go a little bit on the smaller side versus if you're heads up with an opponent. So in general, I probably go about half pot here, but since we're multi-way, I think I should have gone a little bit smaller. However, I went for a bet size of 175,000. As you can see, my opponents didn't have anything to call me with, so they fold and we take down more big blinds. After that hand, the short stack ended up finding a double with jack seven suited against pocket aces. So now she goes from a little under five big blinds to 10 big blinds, and that leads us to this hand. It folds around the Brunilda in the cutoff and she looks down at pocket kings. She has just about 10 big blinds and she does the thing she's absolutely supposed to do here. She puts in a min raise. It can induce others to make a mistake and she keeps all of my worst hands in there. So it folds around to me in the big blind and I look down at 9-7 offsuit. In general, this is not a great spot to be in as I know Brunilda should have a monster when she's min raising the cutoff with only 10 big blinds. However, I've played hours with her today and I feel like I had a good grasp on her game Game, so I decided to peel and see if I could take this down post flop. We go heads up to a flop of ace, jack, eight with two clubs. On this ace high board, we're not going to be doing anything except checking it over to the pre-flop raiser, so I check. Bernilda is a very unconventional player. She had done very unconventional things throughout the entire day. She's a little bit of a wild card. However, one thing I did pick up is that when she had a hand, she would definitely put chips in and start betting. So Bernilda actually decides to check this flop. So she allows me to see a free turn card, which is the six of diamonds. So now I have an open ender. With Bernilda checking the flop, she's now given me way to start bluffing at this pot. While I'm open ended, I also know that she has a very short stack and I can try and leverage her stack and get her to fold a lot of her misses. Plus, because she is a little bit unconventional, she doesn't just have to have a monster when she raises off of 10 big blinds. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to start betting here what my bet size should be, but my plan at the time was to bet a little bit smaller so I could set up for a pot size river jam. So I bet 80,000. Brunilda is probably sick to her stomach and wants to puke as she really doesn't want to call this as she was probably hating seeing this ace on the flop. But she does put in the call for 80,000 and now we're headed to a river. Well, I was gonna follow through with my river bluff if I didn't get there, but we do bink the 10 of hearts on the river for our straight. And now, because we are gonna go all in if we bluff, we're going all in with our value hand and hoping to get called. Here's what happened. Club draw missed. Did she call? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's gonna be the end for Marilda. So she calls the all in for her tournament life with her pocket kings, but it's no good against my rivered straight. And so now we are down to six players and guaranteed $8,065. 
as you can see, we've now climbed our way up to being top three in chips. We have 35 big blinds and we have 2.1 million chips. And now the closest chip stack to me is Joy with 13 big blinds. So now we're in a great spot to either try and take this one down or potentially discuss an ICM chop, which I knew the ladies had started talking about. So at this point, a few hands have gone on. I've gone through the blinds a little bit and the blinds also went up. So now I have 1.995 million, which is just about 33 big blinds. Seat six is under the gun with ace jack offsuit. And she goes all in for 745,000 chips. And I am next to act and look down at pocket nines. Yes, you guys, it's a pair. It's a pretty good pair, but there's so many factors to take into consideration at this point. We're down to six players. I know everyone wanted to start talking ICM chops in the next couple hands. So because of this, my chips are so valuable. Not only that, but if I call this, I do have to worry about the rest of the table waking up with a hand. The under the gun player is going to have a lot of hands like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, ace 10, king queen, king queen suited, king jack suited, hands like that. So unless I have her absolutely dominated if she has a hand like pocket eights, we are most likely flipping and I don't want to flip for a third or more of my stack when we're about ready to not only discuss ICM numbers, but I'm setting myself up to be in a very, very good spot to try and take this tournament down and keep my edge. If I call this all in and then lose the flip, now I'm down to less than 25 big blinds. And now instead of having more of a skill edge, I'm going to have to take some more high variant spots. So because of all these reasons and factors, I landed on a fold. I know maybe in theory, this is a call, but when I take into account my skill edge and the way I'm able to navigate final tables in softer fields, I felt like the best decision at the time was to lay down this pair and wait for a better spot because in this situation it's most likely we're flipping and I don't want to risk losing these precious big blinds that will take me very far into a nice ICM chop or setting myself up to win this tournament. Krisha ends up making the call with pocket sixes and knocks out seat six. Even though I would have won the hand, I still like my play for all the reasons that I stated. Chips lost is way more damaging than gaining a little bit of chips at this point. So now we are down to five players and guaranteed $10,720 and everyone is ready to discuss some ICM numbers. We report our chip stacks to the staff and then they came back and gave us some numbers. Then we all anonymously voted if we wanted to take the ICM deal or not. All five of us agreed and I am going to be taking home more than third place money and my newest Hendon Mob high score of $23,343. As you can see, I gave Chris, who's my friend, a big hug. I was so relieved and ecstatic that I came back from 1.5 big blinds and ended up getting over third place money, being third in chips, and navigating this final table to the best of my ability. Blinds were gonna go up, stacks were gonna get shallower and shallower, and my skill edge was gonna get less and less, so I figured it was a great time to do the ICM chop and take the money while it was there. Congrats to Chris Reed, who was the chip leader and ended up taking the tournament down. I'm so happy I ended up playing this tournament. We played for hours and hours. I was absolutely exhausted, but now picking up my newest high score, I couldn't be happier. What an incredible tournament that was. And honestly, what I hope you guys learned from that is never ever give up. Every single big blind matters. If you just play your stack how you're supposed to, in the long run, you're gonna be making plus EV decisions. And what a turnaround. Coming back from being down to 1.5 big blinds to then ICM chopping. It's technically got a little less than second place money. We chopped it five ways. So I was in for $500. I cashed out with $23,343 for a massive profit. And if you guys are wondering what I use to track all of my stats, I use Poker Analytics. It's an amazing tool. It's an amazing app. Go check it out. The link to download it will be below. Anyway, you're probably wondering why I'm recording this outro where I am. I am at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas. And I am currently on day three of the Monster Stack $1,500 WSOP event. So there's a lot to look forward to, a lot coming up on the vlog. I can't wait to share with you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tournament vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We are just getting started. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.